Hi everyone, welcome back. This is the last video in the series of Metaheuristic Algorithms. And here we are gonna talk about particle swarm optimization, a real life scenario. And from the picture, you can kind of see what we are trying to do. We have a steel with different types of, uh, you know, different types of steel with different uh, amounts of, uh, let's say, uh, carbon, manganese, silicon, chromium, blah, 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 all these other elements that you mix to make a steel strong or give it certain properties. And this is the same example we used for our genetic algorithms for, uh, 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 simulated annealing type of uh, algorithms. And of course, I wanna use exactly the same and show you how you can do optimization problem here using particle swarm optimization. And we're going to do it two ways. One, code it ourselves using the code that we written in the last tutorial, and also an easy way using existing library. That's the goal for this video. And again, for future videos, if you wanna be reminded, notified, then hit the subscribe button. And while you're there, do not forget to click the thanks button if you're feeling extra generous. Let's jump into the code. Okay, and you can download this data set directly from Kaggle, so you can practice it. There's a link, I'll share the code, find the link to the code down below. And let's go ahead and start. And by the way, the goal is just like two videos ago and also the one that we have done in genetic algorithms, the goal is to First of all, find the best uh, fitness function or objective function that represents the problem. And then define the boundaries and then define our particles form optimization algorithm and provide the objective function and boundaries as our input along with like how many particles do you want and how, you know, how many iterations and all that stuff. But the key lies in defining the objective function or fitness function. And for that, I'm going to fit the data to a machine learning, conventional machine learning algorithm like random forest, and then use that as a fitness function. Because by doing that, I can provide input of whatever I'm trying to optimize, and I can get the output, and based on the output, I can say, is that good or bad, right? That's what objective function does. So that's exactly what we're doing. So let's go ahead and read the data, understand the data. I did this in two videos ago. So regular viewers, please don't get bored. Uh, there may be someone new watching this, so. Okay, so uh, the first part is understanding the data. So we have no nils. We have like nine nils in elongation, but we're not gonna use that part. So we're gonna drop that column anyway. So let's not worry about it. And let's understand what's going on with our data set. So we have 312 data points with uh, all of these elements with range going from 0% uh, for carbon, with a high of 0.43 and some of these elements you have 21% of nickel in this alloy that's a high nickel alloy obviously so that's it and yield strength is what we are trying to predict because this tells us whether the material is strong or not right so 2510 is a very high yield strength whereas 1000 is a low yield strength Okay, so now let's go ahead and plot the histogram again. This is all part of understanding the data. So none of this is required for you to do, perform your particles form optimization, but it's required for you as a good engineer or a data scientist or a data analyst, whatever you call yourself, it's the, you should spend 80 plus percent of the time understanding the data and getting, the, getting it organized and probably 5%, you know, writing code and the remaining analyzing the results, okay? <clears throat> now let's go ahead and drop the irrelevant columns for our X, and I call the yield strength irrelevant because that's relevant for Y, not for X. So X is all the ones that we are trying to fit our random forest model to, and Y is what we're trying to predict. And as usual, I am dividing my data into the test set and train set, so we can train it a random forest regressor. It's a regressor because it's a regression problem, not a classification problem. And let's go ahead and use 100 estimators and fit on our training data and let's predict on our test data and see how well our model actually performed. And to do that, one way to do it is random RMSC, but RMSC doesn't mean anything unless you compare it with all the values. I don't have that type of time right now. So I take shortcut of predicting, <clears throat> excuse me, plotting the, the real versus, act, sorry, actual versus the predicted. It looks like a nice straight line. 
what is the R squared value? Let's go ahead and print the R squared value. It's 87%, that's fine. I'm, I'm happy with this, yeah? So that means I have good quality results right now. Now let's go ahead and also understand which features contributed the most in this, in this example. Looks like titanium, carbon, silicon, aluminum. These are all very important in fitting this model. Why do I care? Again, to interpret my final results. If it says that, hey, your titanium must be exactly this, you know, there must be a reason. Okay, now that I know that my random forest with these conditions is working fine, I'm going to fit this with the entire data, X and Y, and I'm gonna use this, the model full, as my objective function. That's exactly what we are doing down here. And this part of the code is very similar to what we have done, except I changed like the boundaries and everything to fit this problem. So first thing first, let's look at objective function. This should define our problem. This is defining our search space and how we can quantify uh, our inputs. Meaning when I plug my X values, which is nothing but all my, my chemistry of carbon, manganese and silicon and so on, I should get result which is nothing but my yield strength. And then I'm putting a negative sign to the result because I'm trying to minimize the problem. So this is a negative number or I'm trying to maximize the yield strength. So by putting a negative sign, I'm trying to minimize the value. And the boundaries is basically whatever the minimum value of carbon is, whatever the maximum value of uh, <clears throat> uh, carbon is and so on, right? So uh, I did a mistake right there. This should be carbon. I'm not sure if I did the same mistake in the previous ones, but yeah, carbon minimum, carbon maximum is my search space. It still doesn't matter. I can put other values. I can put zero to 10 and then search the space. But in this case, I'm saying, okay, whatever the minimum of carbon is in my data frame and whatever the maximum is, that's my bounds for carbon. Same for manganese and silicon and chromium. I think I have no other mistakes other than that one. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and run it. Okay. Now we are defining our boundaries as, I don't know why I'm defining it again here. Let's go ahead and do this. Maybe it required a different format. <clears throat> okay, uh, I, I see these as identical. Maybe I was doing some testing, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm leaving this right here. And now define the uh, parameters and optimization. Previously, when we just did our example, we had three parameters, but now we have 13 parameters, like all these 13 elements. And let's define 100 different particles to explore the search space. And 30 maximum iterations and W the inertia parameter to be 0 0.5, somewhere in between, right? Between zero to one, I'm gonna leave it to 0 0.5 and C1.8, C2.9. That's typically what I use. And everything else we went through this in our last tutorial where you're looking at your particles, initializing particles and velocities. Using those, you're calculating the best positions, best cost and global best position and global best cost. And then you are updating all of these via iterations. And what are you doing? You're actually looking at cognitive component, social component. Cognitive component is individual particle mindful of itself. Global is obviously all combined together. So that's the social component right there. So C1, R1 times best position minus particles, global best position minus particles and velocities. You're updating it by adding this inertia component and then <clears throat> you update the new particle positions and go ahead and clip the ones to make sure that the particles are within your bound space. Okay, and yeah, go ahead and calculate the cost, which means you're plugging in each solution of all the 100 solutions that you will have into your objective function and you're actually looking at the cost and then saying, okay, is my cost less than the best cost? If so, go ahead and actually update the positions and uh, both the local and the global positions and go ahead and print the iteration and give me the global best cost. That's, a, that's, that's your solution, right? Global, global positions and global best cost. So that is right there and it's running the iterations. This will take a little longer than the last one that we did in the last video, but while it's doing that, let's go down and see uh, what the next step is. Next step is basically printing out the global best position, best cost. Position is basically our chemistry, our alloy composition, and cost is the yield strength. Okay, so iteration 30, 
is done so that's the best cost but let's go ahead and print out the best positions and best cost so this is the best chemistry like for carbon it's 0 0.25 and so on blah 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 and your best cost is 2448 which is the yield strength that's giving us this uh, this best uh, I mean this is the best chemistry that's giving us this best yield strength okay so we have done this using our own coding and all that stuff but in reality I recommend using pre-existing libraries because people I assume they have done a good job of course read the documentation make sure it's not malicious it's uh, trustworthy and all that stuff and then go ahead and use that and PySwarms is a library that actually offers a lot of these uh, optimization I mean PSO based algorithm so let's go ahead and install that and once that's installed obviously we are going to run the next part which is very similar to what we have done above now I'm not coding anything deliberately I'm just importing PySwarms as PS and then I'm defining my objective function which is exactly same as what I defined earlier and my boundaries here and I'm converting that boundaries into a tuple because that's exactly how this algorithm accepts the, the inputs. So that's why I am doing that. And now, how do you run this? So options, you have to define your C1, C2, and weight. Yeah, you can change this weight to like 0 0.5 and use the same numbers as before. But I just put some random you know uh, values right here. And I added a note here. Because in our case, the random forest regressor works with 1D data. If you look here, I'm reshaping this, right? Random forest doesn't work with multidimensional data. I have to change that to 1D the way we implemented right there. So uh, our objective function forces us to use only one particle, unfortunately, the way they implemented it. In reality, you should be able to use multiple particles, but since the way we have written, so I don't know if that's a limitation of these guys, uh, we have to open a ticket and then say, hey, I'm using machine learning models as optimizer. How can we, you know, uh, increase the number of particles? But anyway, that's that. Dimensions equals to 13 because we have 13 of these values over there. And uh, boundaries are boundaries. Options are these parameters that we want to provide as input. And that's it. That's our optimizer. And we have to go ahead and run it for how many? Let's do it for 100 iterations, and then it'll give us the cost and the position. So let's go ahead and run this. OK, it's done. And let's go ahead and print the final values. Again, this giving this is giving me a optimized cost of 2352 of carbon 0 0.5. Previously, we had 0 0.2. So what happens? I'm, I'm just curious now. Now I'm trying to do research here. So previously we had C1 equals to 0 0.8, C2 equals to 0 0.9, and weight equals to 0 0.5. So let's see what happens. And then we'll end this tutorial right there. And let's sprint. Yeah, it's uh, very similar. It's giving me a carbon of 1.7. That's very high value this is this is where i think i mean i show i i i promised that okay we'll use pi swarms and all that stuff but the way we have been handling this uh, pi swarms is only giving me one particle then we are only relying on that particle how you know it's like one man army now you don't have friends anymore so it's just finding these values so i will try to explore this a bit more to see if there is a way we can kind of change this but i already did that and that's why i started recording this video after giving up in trying to find how i can use this approach but i wanted to at the same time make sure that you understand this library exists in case you're not working with weird uh objective functions like these maybe you can change the objective function such a way that you're not forced to reshaping this and uh, and uh, yeah I'll, I'll leave that to you but i hope you appreciate the power of pso in general and probably pari swarms library but uh, thank you guys very much for your attention and uh, again leave any comments I am usually mindful of the comments and I take that into uh, you know consideration when I'm trying to plan my next set of uh, tutorials that may come a few months later, but at least I know what you want. Thank you very much.